Hey guys, it's Kelly. So I'm just hopping on real quick to show you a little update on the Philodendron Hope that I got from Lowe's. Ignore the dead leaves in the back, but so far the larger leaves are kind of melting. So I had to cut off two leaves already that did this. This is going to be the third. And then this larger leaf is kind of doing the same thing right here. So, I'm going to have to look that up, see what's going on. The younger leaves look good. So, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is just cut off this leaf because I don't, it's like dripping, I guess, plant blood or guts or whatever it is. So, I'm just going to go down to the base. I'll give you a quick pre preview, I guess, or show, whatever. I'm just going to cut it off, kind of like nip it in the butt a little bit. So this is what the leaf looks like. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. Um, I'm going to Google it and try to find out, and I'll insert a clip if I do figure it out. All right. Peace out. Anybody else have like a pile of dead leaves? They they hold on to and then just like throw outside. No, just me. All right. Peace. Hey guys, it's Kelly. So I did some research about the philodendron zandu, also known as the philodendron hope, to kind of figure out what disease was affecting my plant. And I found a website through Penn State University that listed five diseases that I guess the philodendron species commonly see. And I'm gonna run through them really quick. I have my notes here because I can't remember everything. And I'm gonna go through what the website said and I'm gonna leave the one that I'm pretty sure my plant was experiencing or maybe possibly, hopefully not, still experiencing for last. And um, you guys can let me know if you think I'm right or not or if you've seen this before, if you know a better way of managing it, um, let me know because I don't wanna lose the plant, so. Alrighty. So, the first one that they list is called tipped curl, or tip curl, and the symptoms for that are when the leaf tips curl downward and the leaf margins brown and uh, the roots end up dying. So, you wouldn't see that, you wouldn't see the roots dying unless you pulled it out of the, box, out of the, the planter and checked it, but if you notice that the tips are curling downward and uh, the edges become brown, you might have tip curl. And the reason for that, according to the website, is over fertilization. And they give like little management tips or, you know, ways to fix it. And what they wrote was reduce fertilizer use, <laughs> repot to remove any other slow release fertilizers that may still be in the soil. So if you get a plant from a nursery and you notice that happening, they usually use lower, uh, slow release, <laughs> slow, slow release fertilizers. So you would want to then take it out of that soil and give it some, you know, less fertilized soil so that, uh, to prevent any more tip curl from happening to the newer growth. So the next one that the website listed was magnesium deficiency. And that looks like a V-shaped yellow area on the edges of the leaf. So I'm going to do a whole separate video, I think, on all the different types of deficiencies a plant can have because while I was looking into this, I kind of went down like a plant, <laughs> plant nutrition rabbit hole and I found out there's a whole bunch of different deficiencies and stuff like that that can affect the leaves on plants and they all look a little different. So I want to do that separately, but just it was on the, the website, so I'm going through it real quick. All right, the next one that, that they have is cold injury, and that sounds like what it is. Um, in order to identify what cold injury looks like, you'll see very dark green to brown blotches form between the leaf veins. Um, and the reason that happens is because the temperature dropped below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So the way to fix that is to put it in a warmer spot, right? Keep it, I guess, around an area of, it said, at least 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So 
this room is very hot, so it's fine. It's about like 80 degrees in here, so that, that shouldn't be a problem for me. All right, the next two are the ones where I was kind of going back and forth trying to figure out which one the plant was going through. So the next one that I list was bacterial leaf spot. And the symptoms of that look like translucent spots on leaf, on leaf margins, and they become reddish brownish with yellow halos. Large spots are tan and irregularly shaped. Okay, kind of looked like that. And the reason that is happening to your plant is the, I'm going to butcher this, <laughs> uh, Xanthramonosa campuseri PV defumbacchia bacteria. And, um, their fixes for this. It's kind of funny the first thing they put. It says purchase plants free from spots. Right, like yeah, anyway. And then it says avoid overhead watering and remove infected leaves. So that's what uh, that's what that one says. Alright, so the next one and the one I think the plant has I keep looking at the plants in front of me. And uh I've done more research on this one because I'm pretty sure that's what this one has. But anyway, it's called the Bacterial Blight Philodendron Celoleum. Alright, the symptoms look like small, very dark green spots on leaves expand rapidly and spread to petioles. The infected leaves collapse in a wet rot that smells foul. So I didn't notice any foul smell from the leaf, um, but I wasn't like actively sniffing it so I don't know <laughs> I don't know I don't want to smell something that looks gross so I don't but I didn't smell it while the plant was in the room with me so there's that the blight comes from a bacteria I'm also going to botch trying to say is Irwinia keratovaria PV keratovaria E Christanomani. I'm sure that's wrong. Anyway, that's the bacteria that causes that specific symptom. And the fix that the website suggested was avoid overhead watering, remove infected leaves, and keep the leaf surfaces and petioles dry. So basically, I think what happens from what I understand anyway is the leaves get some type of dew on them or not, you know you accidentally spill some water on the actual leaves when you're watering them and the water that sits there I guess either reacts or it has the bacteria in it not sure which um, and then it it starts rotting the the leaf pretty much and then you get a mush of leaf and you know it's, it's a horror story so I then deep dove into learning about the Irwania keratovoria bacteria. And what I learned was it has a, a wide range of hosts that it can infect. It's not just the philodendrons, which like put me on high alert with all my other plants. So that plant is away from the rest of the plants right now. And um, it is a rod shaped bacterium that lives alone or aggregates into pairs and chains. So it can be just one little rod floating around. It can link up and become like a little chain. So that was interesting. Infected plants mushes, mushes into a rotting smelling mess. And then uh, how it spreads is like the, an infected plant mushes and falls apart. And then it can rain or it does rain. And then that creates aerosols, right? Because things are bouncing up and it's hot and humid and everything else. And the bacterium can get into the aerosols or into the water vapor from the rain and travel miles and it can live or survive in that aerosol for five to ten minutes. So depending where you are, whatever, any type of wind, if you got something happening and it rains, you, pop, you have a plant, it mushes. It rains. Aerosols come up because that's what happens. It's just vapor in the air. The bacteria can kind of ride into that water in the vapors and then travel with the wind infecting a lot of other plants. So and also what I found out was that this bacteria can be found in guts of insects and bodies of water from the aerosols. So 
the you know the bacteria comes up after the rains it goes over a body of water it lands in the water and it can survive in the water and spread to those plants and repeat so yeah so I dried off so <laughs> anyway so so what I did for my plant was I made sure there's no wet spots on the plant at all and I have it separated from the rest of my plants and I uh, I'm just keeping an eye on it it's been a couple days since I made the first part of this video and I haven't seen any more rotting I still have the one large leaf and most of, well all of the smaller leaves that came with the plant so that's what I learned I thought I would share um, I'm probably gonna keep digging into this because it's it's very interesting how you start looking at one problem and then you go into all these little devi deviations and rabbit holes and now I know I can't say it but <laughs> I know about two different bacteria that can affect most of my plants so that was all just letting you know what I learned all right peace